What is up everybody? My name is Ryan and you're watching Project Race Car. Today we're going to be attempting to fix my BMW timing issue. Uh, and if you guys didn't see the last video, uh, basically we're going to be looking at uh, these two timing sprockets. Um, when the engine was being put back together, uh, he swapped the two timing sprockets and they're not swappable. Uh, they're not, yeah. So, uh, this one is currently on the intake side, but it's an exhaust sprocket, and this one is naturally the opposite. So, this one's uh, an intake sprocket on the exhaust side. So, basically, my plan of attack is there's the uh, timing belt tensioner down here. So, I'll probably take uh, the solenoids out. And then we'll line up and get the engine at top dead center. And then we will kind of just take these off and swap them. And hopefully we don't implode my engine. So that's the plan for today. Before we get started, uh, if you guys are new here, uh, thank you so much for the support. Um, but give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Okay, so for step one, we need to get the engine at top dead center. Um, which means that the piston number one, uh, closest to the front, is at the highest point that it can possibly be at, and that these two QR codes um, will be facing up, uh, which naturally they are not right now. So uh, once we get uh, cylinder number one to the top point, which we will know that, when we take out the spark plug and put this as like a reference point and is as this goes up we'll and then starts to go down uh, we'll stop it when it's at its highest point so we'll go back um, what you want to do is put the uh, a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 uh, on the crank and then when you tighten it everything should move cool so we will get it close to top dead center um, where the QR codes are facing up and the cylinder number one is at the highest point uh, and then we'll be able to put the cam lock tool on as well as the front timing tool so yeah We'll keep going with it. Okay, team, after, I don't know, 15 minutes, we got the vehicle at actual top dead center. So the way to know that um, is if you look here, the QR codes on top of the cams are both facing up. Um, the, wait for it. Uh, the two holes on the um, Vanos sprocket are facing to the left. Um, and finally, it's very hard to get to it. In the bottom of the motor, um, there is a hole um, that goes into the transmission. When the motor is at top dead center, uh, the hole actually lines up with a point in the uh, flywheel into like uh, to lock it. So um, and now like the I used a pin like this, um, but the other one in the kit was about maybe a hair longer, a centimeter longer, and uh, that one ended up fitting all the way. Uh, this one was too short to fit in the uh, like the actual flywheel, um, so use the longer one. It's a pain in the ass with the small spot. Now what we'll do is we will set this bad boy on the front of the motor uh, and the sprockets, these little black things, line up in the two holes, right? Just like that. We'll get two bolts in the kit that hold these down. And then if we go ahead and look on the uh, camshaft thing, um, you'll need a spacer on this side, right? So just line it up 
So a spacer on this side, uh, and then you'll also have to move it over one. Um, so this, if we check, should fit on top of the camshafts. A lot easier. Maybe it goes this way. I don't know, guys. I'm, I only watch like two YouTube videos, so. Yeah. So it'll fit, like fit facing this way. So what we'll do is we'll put a bolt on this side, bolt on this side, uh, bolt on this side, and bolt on this side. And then we should be ready to take out these two bolts. And then what we'll do is we'll try to realign them. So again, I have no idea if this is work, if this is going to work. Uh, the engine wasn't running before this, um, because these two sprockets were actually switched and here I'll just show you. Um, again, this one says EX, this one says IN and yeah so that's what's my issue's been so i'll try to look at both of them to see what the actual differences are and why they don't work swapped but um i'll do that and yeah we'll uh we'll kind of see how this goes um unfortunately i won't be able to start the engine yet um because i will uh i did drop a bolt into my motor so that's very unfortunate um and it might be the type of thing where I have to pull the motor to get to the oil pan. I don't know, would you guys say that pulling the subframe is easier or pulling the motor is easier? Um, leave your comments down below. I honestly think I might just pull the motor because I've done it once before and it's not all that difficult. It's a pain in the ass, but it's not all that difficult. So. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, but yeah, so we'll, uh, we got this all lined up, top dead center, and yeah, let's try to tackle this. So the next thing that we did was uh, we removed the vacuum canisters. Uh, it's one bolt down there, one bolt. Oh, geez, this is not a good angle. Anyways, we're trying to get to that big bolt. Uh, the timing chain tensioner and it's a 27 millimeter you're gonna want to put a rag down there because um, it will drip with oil which it's doing right now so um, it's on there pretty tight not terribly tight but um, it's for sure on there so yeah you can probably see it better now so it's that it's a uh, the timing tensioner so uh, we'll remove that and then we should be able to remove the two bolts. Okay, so now that we got that tensioner out, we should be able to use a 16 millimeter on these front two bolts. Um, what I'm gonna do is just, just in case the actual timing chain is still in the correct time and it's just these sprockets that are messing up, I'm going to go ahead and mark the chain. Um, so I believe that it's only the sprockets that need to be swapped. Okay, so those bolts are gonna be pretty tight on there. So I went ahead and got a uh, big boy 3 8 half inch. I don't know. I got a big um, ratchet too, cause those, those are on there pretty tight uh, and it's a good size bolt, so. Um, anyways, uh, I'm getting them out now, and then we should be able to look at the sprocket. Okay, guys, so I unbolted the uh, sprockets, took them off, um, and I swapped them back over. I don't know how to tell the timing chain if it's correctly, if it's correct, um, but this one does say IN, this one does say now EX. So again, I believe that those were different. So, uh, like they're different parts. So what we'll do is we'll lock this bad boy into place. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we'll put the bolts back in here, lock it in. Um, the camshaft sensors will be able to test them uh, and make sure that the camshaft and stuff is in correct timing. Uh, I'm going to torque these two bolts down. Um, again, it's a pretty strong, I think it's like 20 newton meters plus 180 degrees. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll make sure to switch that back over. But once we torque these two bolts down, um, we should be able to, I'll pull everything off, kind of rotate the engine two times over and make sure that the timing is still correct and everything fits back on. So we'll, we'll test that and, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, um, when I rotate it back over, uh, I'll let you guys know. Okay, party people. So, um, I believe that I have everything figured out. Um, so I swapped the two sprockets again. I'm completely not sure that this is my issue, but I'm really thinking so. So, um, right now the, um, timing chain is, uh, feels pretty good. I still need to put the um, actual thing back in there. So I'll put that back in, but, um, I went ahead and lined everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the locking pin out, uh, pull this off and then I'll make sure that everything is lined up and correct. Okay. So I went ahead and rotated the engine over twice. Um, and I went over and put everything like all the timing tools back on and everything looks very good um it looks like it like it all sit back into place perfectly um so it seems to be in time that's what i'm hoping um but tomorrow i'm gonna wrap things up for tonight so i'll take every, all the timing stuff off and then uh kind of clean up the garage a bit and then i'll be able to start putting things back together hopefully so, um, I will get a first start video for you guys, but I'm going to wrap this one up, uh, on just kind of how to retime the motor, um, and kind of me just doing, swapping the two sprockets. Again, this is what helped me, or at least what I'm assuming helps me. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. But as always, I appreciate you guys for watching. My name was Ryan, and this was Project Race Car.